I'm Ted Berg, and this is the Baseball Show presented by Caesars Atlantic City. Joined today by SNY Mets analyst Bob Ojeda. And Bob, I want to talk a little about the player ump relationship. Mm -hmm. It looked last night like like umpire Phil Cuzzy had sort of a tight strike zone, and, and John Neese reacted well. Oh, well, he did. And, you know, uh, the umpires have their tendencies, and you got to work within that because if you wind up showing them up, making faces, slapping the ball, turning around, showing just completely showing your displeasure with his calls, what's going to happen? It's only going to get worse, get smaller, especially when you're new to the league like John Neese. Well, how well does a player have an umpire scouted, especially a home plate umpire and with a strike zone? Uh, has a player scouted? How, I know. How well does the player have the umpire scouted? Do you go knowing go go into a game knowing okay this guy's got a tight zone? You know I, I gotta you know stay no, on no, top no, of the. No. That's years down the road. You've been around a while. You begin to know those tendencies because like anybody, he can have a good day or a bad day. So I don't try to label him. After a while, what happens is, though, he learns your style of pitching. You sort of have to prove to that umpire that you can hit this spot. You can hit this spot. Once you prove you're capable of doing that, he'll maybe start to open up on you. But if you're scattered, like let's just use Bobby Parnell, for instance. Any close pitches, he's probably not going to get. Once he starts to establish that he's going to be in, not only in the zone, but can uh, articulate the zone where he's going to put it. That gives you credibility with that umpire. You build credibility with the umpire that you can execute, you'll start to get calls. So does the umpire almost, uh, you know, def not defer, but, uh, you know, respect the, the veteran player a little bit more than a rookie? Because at times, especially I think about Leighton Barry Bonds' career, it seemed like maybe he had a better idea of the strike zone than the umpire did sometimes. Well, you used an excellent word, respect. I'll tell you this right now, and I know this for a fact. Umpires respect talent. Okay. They respect poise. They respect your ability to... He'll defer to you if he knows you are so good and so locked in on a strike zone that he'll almost doubt his own vision and go, if you took that, it must be a ball. But you have that's the rare bird. What they do is they watch you execute. If you can execute, they admire that, they respect that, and they'll reward you accordingly. Like I say, if you're all over the map or if you're chasing pitches from a hitting standpoint, you're chasing pitches up, you're constantly turning around. Was that a strike? And you see, uh, you see players a lot of times do that. Turn to the ump. Was that, was that high? Was that low? If you're constantly showing you're not sure, well, the ump knows that whatever he calls, you, you, have, you don't really have a leg to stand on. And do players talk amongst themselves about, you know, the quality of umpires? Because I remember when, you know, the Jim Joyce, Armando Galarraga thing came out, Mar yeah. Marion Rivera came out and said, well, you're talking about the best umpire in baseball. Right. And that was funny. It seemed to me that, that Rivera had such a strong sense of how great an umpire Joyce was. Well, that's very true. You earn a reputation as an umpire. There are, and there just is, as in anything in life, there are good umpires, there are medium umpires, and there are guys, what is he doing? Well, yeah, I mean, we certainly see it as, as fans and in the yeah. media. The players feel that way, too. <laughs> That's how we make our living. Go we, figure. We, yeah, <laughs> I'm go, setting you up. <laughs> yeah, we kind of pay attention to that. So you do know if you're going to have a little bit more of a difficult day. Tendencies of the umpire from a strike standpoint can be difficult. I know going in, this guy does not like the low pitch on anyone, no matter who you are. That can alter my thought process, I still have to throw my game, though. And what about, you know, personally, how well do you get to know an umpire, you know, just from seeing him on the field, talking to him? Is there any sort of relationship there? Because it does seem like, you know, players and umps are on a first-name basis. Uh, they are. It's like the mailman. You okay. know the nail. You know the mailman. Hey, how you doing, Bill? You know, as a kid, things like that. That's about it. You really don't have a whole lot more interaction than that. Certainly, none away from the field. And finally, I guess the the most important question is is what actually goes on goes on when a when a player starts jawing at an umpire or when a manager starts jawing at an umpire. Well, there's certain boundaries you can have. A hitter should not turn around. You can you say whatever you want. Take your swings. Look straight ahead. You can say pretty much whatever you want. Curse words. That usually starts the ball rolling in the wrong direction. You turn around, you draw a line, you point, you're gone. It's just that simple. From pitch inside, you know, there's there's similar things. We can't do as much that far away as a hitter can do to get tossed, but we can show uh, 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 disgust at pitches one thing. That'll get you that verbal warning. But if you start jawing, as you said, from the mound, 
Now the mask comes off. Now he starts walking towards you. You're probably heading for a shower. And how often does a manager go out to the umpire, you know, hoping to get thrown out for, you know, some sort of strategic purpose? There are times it is a strategic move. Sometimes if you feel his team needs that, sometimes it's it's 100% legit. I've got to fight for my guys. The guys on the bench appreciate that. We see that. Um, what, where a manager can lose credibility is when he argues when even the guys on the bench are like, clearly that was this, not that. Uh, so... The manager can't just uh, uh, go out there happenstance. Now, what he can do is, while he's on the bench, be in an ornery mood. A lot of managers are ornery anyway. That particular day, he doesn't even want to sit there. He's mad at you guys. He's mad at everything. And you see him go out there deliberately to get thrown out. And it is kind of funny. You don't get in his way. You don't mess with him. But uh, there's a lot of games that go on as far as between managers, players, umpires that uh, on the outside people really don't ever get to see, nor should they see, because that makes it even worse. It's sort of the privilege of being on the inside. You can you can have fun with those things, because 162 games, you've got to make it fun at certain times. Bob, thanks so much. You're welcome, Ted. Remember to check out Bob on the Pepsi Max pregame show tonight. And for all the latest on the Mets and Yankees, check out MetsBlog.com and BronxBanterBlog.com. See you next time.